Hey guys, so today I am going to talk about how difficult it is to run a store and more particularly uh, this recent store. I think it's a pretty good store. Um, I've heard good things about it, um, but they are closing down or they're not going to do online sales anymore because of two buyers who left a one star rating for cards not being delivered by the ninth business day. And now they responded and they want free cards because the delivery was not on time. So they have decided to be done with all facets of MTG, very similar to my local game store, uh, DNA Comics, very similar to how my store had to make that decision. And we actually had our first profitable month after we got rid of Magic completely. Um, Magic was a great community. It was a... You know, I was proud to be a Magic player, or at least I wasn't embarrassed at the very least. Um, it's definitely one of these scenarios where um, I look at this today and I, you have to say to yourself, um, why? Um, why? Why has Magic become this way where so many uh, store owners and so many people are just not selling? And these are not just small individuals. These are stores selling online. And it's because of the negativity. There's some people, let me tell you in life, there's some people who they don't have jobs. They're not employed. They basically spend their whole life trying to destroy other people and they don't make income, they're at their parents' basement and they're basically the definition of a troll and the one thing that makes them mad is when they see other people be successful in life and I'm sure that you know who, you have people in your life like this as well and when you are a magic store, you accumulate these people. Um, they're not even haters. They're actually people who are trying to scam you, like the Black Lotus thing. I, I mean, I still can't believe that's real, but it happened. Where that individual is not hating that person directly. They're hating the entire magic player base because they think that we're, they think we're dumb. They think we're... They believe that we're so dumb that they can go on some other larger YouTube channel to attack the seller who shifted a real card. And we as the Magic community would accept this as true. That's how dumb some people think the Magic community is. And you know what? He was right. Because he got away with it. He got away with the Black Lotus. He got away with the Mishra's Workshop. And a, maybe a few other cards. So selling magic cards is really difficult. That is the theme for this month. And it's not a lot of times when we have these discussions on making money and doing X and doing Y, like you don't actually see how difficult it is to accumulate 200 narwhals. There's not going to be a buyer out there with 200 narwhals I can just buy the narwhals from. There, there's not a single buyer that I can be like, okay, let's buy it. Or at a good price. Because yes, I can buy from a big vendor like Star City Games, but I'm paying like way too much money for it to make any sense. So when you sell magic cards, you are in a totally different environment than when you buy magic cards. And when you're selling magic cards for a living... You know, shipments get delayed, your name gets spewed on Reddit, and now you have haters for life. These people will go after your game store, even though they've never purchased a product, they've never even come to your store. All they need to know is that they hate you. And from this point on, they're going to leave you fake reviews. They're going to post your name on Reddit. You're going to dox you like crazy. They're going to come after you. And that's what I found with Magic the Gathering. The community was incredibly toxic in at least where I lived. And I'm saying this openly because they know uh, some of the people in the community watched this video. Like, you know what I'm talking about. You got people throwing decks. If they lose, you know you're going to get a 40-card deck chucked in your face. You know it because you've seen it. 
I mean, I know that you've seen it because it, then, then the whole store goes, you know, everyone's playing, having a good time, and the store goes silent. So we know that there are, I know that there are individuals in magic that are very unstable. And they, I mean, think about Wedge, for example. Um, it's really amazing that he has never had a job before. And he will go his entire life without ever having worked a real W-2 job. I mean, that's incredible, right? I mean, what other community could support someone who... I mean, it is incredible. I, I, I mean, props to him. You know, I, I do respect him. And this is not being sarcastic or being mean. I do respect the fact that somehow he's figured out a way to never work a single day in his life and make as much money as a majority of you guys on average income, probably more. I mean, he found a way to raise $100,000 in the span of a few weeks or a week or two. That's pretty incredible. You got to admit, you got to give him props in that. That was really, really something I did not expect. So when you talk about the dangers of selling, yeah, there's going to be people who want to come after your store for whatever reason. And sometimes you don't even know the reason. They don't, you don't even need to give them a reason. They will do it on their own. Um, there was one time where there, I think there was a Pepe flag and uh, Eric Froelich got everyone banned and the store owner and <laughs> destroyed the store. I mean, was it a Pepe frog or was it something else? But Eric Froelich went to a, a game store one night. He saw a Pepe fr like flag and then he reported them to Wizard of the Coast using Twitter and then the whole store got banned. Uh, pretty fascinating. But yeah, there are people who are looking to be offended because they make money being offended. You know who I'm talking about, right? You know exactly what I'm talking about. I know you do if you watch this channel enough. There are people who become MPL members, who become, you know, renowned magic players. Suddenly they become famous magic players and get televised and they become the MPL league, whatever it's called. It's not like the MPL, what's it called? Challenger league or something, some dumb thing like that because they were offended by a Facebook meme uh, in a private Facebook group and then they copied and pasted it over and that promoted them into who they are. So if you did this and you make eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000 a year, and all you had to do was get a bunch of magic nerds banned for a meme, wouldn't you then try to continue to do this? Wouldn't you be like, oh, what can I write on my cards today to draw attention to me, to make it more, you know, my brand stronger? Um, that's what's happening now. There is a called clout chasing, right? And it's really a shame. I mean, I see this all the time where a local game store is going to get ripped to shreds when even Amazon doesn't over... If Amazon, which is this huge company that can force Wizard of the Coast to do things, right, that a small local game store cannot do, is not shipping on time, then what chance does a local game store have? Like, seriously, what chance does a local game store have? They don't have the, the uh, flex to force enforce something, right? especially at the Wizard of Coast level. So I think a lot of people are very harsh on these online sellers and they've never sold themselves. And it's, it, I, I see this all the time. When something's delayed because the US, the postal system is terrible right now. I'm not gonna get into politics. It's just really bad. Postal system is really bad. For whatever reason, uh, it takes a long time to even get a mail. It takes, for a client to send me a check from Katie, it takes me 10 days to get it. I'm not kidding you. I live across the city. I, it legit takes 10 days. It's postmarked and everything. It's like, where, where does this letter sit like for nine days? Like, I don't understand. Like, I could drive there in two hours or an hour and a half and pick it up. But, you know, again, I'm, I, I'd rather have it come in the mail. So you're going to see an exodus of a lot of Magic the Gathering online sellers and stores because it's just not worth it. Like my store was profitable at the end of the month, but I still didn't want to keep it because it's how much stress does this, this introduce in my life? Is this actually that much fun? Like I will say I, I do miss it now, 
but I definitely didn't miss it when I was doing it. So I think having that perspective and just saying what it is as a car, as a former car shop owner, yeah, I see this all the time. Something gets delayed a day and the person just goes berserk and asks for a re full refund and wants to keep the card. It, or, you no, know, in you know, Black Lotus case, a lot of scamming goes on, a lot of merchandise gets stolen, and who knows who stole it? Did an employee? Did a customer? Did someone just walking in steal it? I mean, things go missing in a game store. That's just life, okay? Um, that's just true. Like, things go missing in a game store. Um, we've, I had my inventory double-checked and I w when I was packing, and like 10 to 15% of the merchandise I expected to be there wasn't there. Uh, according to the point-on-sale system, we never sold it. POS, we didn't sell it. So where did it go? Hi, guys.